Okay guys, so today I'm going to do something a little different, just some basic embroidery on some jersey shirts. They're made out of polyester and this is the shirt and the design I'm going to be stitching. These are for my brother-in-law. Him and my sister have a trucking company over in South Carolina. So I am doing some embroidery work for them. I normally do not do embroidery work that people send me their items and then I stitch it out and send them back. Um, I just, my liability is not set up like that. And so if someone sends me a $200 shirt and I stitch it up and they either don't like the way it's stitched out or they, uh, their shirt gets ate up in the machine, I'm not trying to replace a $200 shirt or whatever they say that that shirt or item costs. So at this point right now, if I can acquire it, I will stitch it out and sell it, but I will not accept people normally sending items to me just to embroider, embroider. And that's just me, okay? But um, I'm gonna get started with this video and I hope that you like it. It's not what I normally do. I like my patches and applique and we'll get back to that soon. But this is just something uh, to show you what can be done on a five by seven embroidery hoop. And actually, if you want to get the design just a little bit smaller, it can be done on a four by four hoop. Um, a lot of people think that they're just limited as to what they can do with a smaller home embroidery machine. But that PE 770 has done a whole lot more work than that uh, VE 2200. OK, so don't be discouraged because you have a small machine. You don't have these big old 15 inch hoops or whatever. Figure out what you can do in the lane that you're in and just move up from that. OK, so I'm going to get started. Oh, glare. <laughs> but the shirt that we're going to use that um, he, he, he uses as his uh, uniform tops are these 100 percent polyester shirts and he just orders them and ships them to me. So I'm going to stitch out his company uh, logo on the left chest and I'll show you how I do that. OK. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is mark my place on the uh, stabilizer. You know, I like to use the little guys that are on the frame. So this is the top center. I'm gonna place it on a line. This tabletop is actually a cutting, uh, not a cutting mat, it's an ironing mat, okay? It's fabric and it's that heat fabric stuff is thin slit or something. I don't know what it's called, but um, it's designed to be iron on top. So my cutting board, I don't even use it half the time, but it's a smaller one. But uh, I'm going to use the lines to guide where the center point is. So I've got the center here marked and then I've got the side center nodule marked. And you have those nodules on each side of your frame, your hoop, whatever you want to call it today. I'm going to place that on a center line on a line and I'm going to place this on a line. They're going to meet in the middle and I'm going to just mark my middle because that's the center of my design. I do have this design set up so that it is centered in the middle of the frame. Okay. So now I have to find the center of the shirt where I want the center of the design to go on the shirt. I should say now this is going to go on the left chest. I do his shirts left chest seven inches, seven and a half inches down, four inches across. Okay. And I do use a ruler. Here it is. These clear things can be hard to find sometimes, but, um, it's just a Dritz ruler and it's got one inch blocks going all the way down. And then there are the halfway marks, um, quarter marks and all of that on there. So anyways, I'm going to go, Find my seven, seven and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half is right there. Let's see here. Is that right? Yeah, I'm going to, can you tell where I'm lining the top corner at? I'm lining it at the top corner up here. And then I'm counting the blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this will be a half because that block would have been eight. So yeah, that is the seven and a half mark. And then I'm going to go four inches in from the very center 
the very center will cross through these buttons. So this, I'm just kind of lucky that this shirt is designed the way it is because this is the center line for the shirt. So I'm gonna count in four. One, two, three, four. So this is right about where the center of my design should be. I'm gonna just use a little piece of chalk just to mark that. And this is wash away chalk. Um, try not to use too much of it, but this will wash out. And a lot of times the design will just cover it or it wears out as it's stitching, okay? So now we've got our two center marks found. I'm gonna sit this here and I'm gonna get this onto the hoop. I use this probably not the way people are normally taught, but I take the pin through the center of that mark on my shirt and I line it up with the center mark on the hoop, okay? Just so that I know where center is. And because this here is a fabric cutting board, I can kind of stick the pin through the hoop through the stabilizer, through the cutting board, and it'll stay in place for me for a minute. So I line this up. I wanna make sure that this is straight, okay? And this is what I like about these type of shirts because they make lining things up straight a little bit easier, okay? And so I don't have to do a whole lot of ironing to do my placement marks. So I'm just gonna pin this down and I'll start pinning on this side first, then I'll take that pin out and pin the rest of it down, okay? And I'm hoping that you'll be able to see this all right. So that's pinned down there. I'm gonna take this out now, but I don't want it to shift too much. And I'm gonna take that pin, put it up at the top, because I know that my design is right here in the middle. It's not gonna be all towards the edge, that's one key thing you do want to know where your design is or else you need to make sure that you're able to trace on your machine so that you don't end up hitting your hoop messing things up. Oh, not hitting the hoop, but hitting the um, pins if you choose to pin things down. If you're floating, uh, this is just you know a risk you take hitting the the needles the straight pins with your needle but um if you actually hoop it i don't know what, what's the worst that could happen because honestly i stopped hooping shirts uh i stopped hooping stuff period a while ago unless i absolutely have to hoop something i don't and i know the correct way to do things but sometimes you just have to do what works for you. And that hoop burn drives me up a wall. Um, it's not that I'm this neat freak or anything, but I don't want to wear something that's got a hoop print on it. And I certainly don't want to send something to someone else to wear with a hoop print on it. That That's a pet peeve of mine. When um. I wasn't doing shirts or anything for myself. I would go on Etsy and I would look at people's pictures and I see the pictures with the hoop burn and I'm like, oh yeah, my product's gonna probably come back worse. And it may not have, you know, it might've just been a bad picture, but I don't like hoop burn. I'm not gonna get somebody signed with hoop burn because that's how I am. But enough of me rambling about me and my ways. I'm going to take this to the machine. Today we're going to use the Brother PE770 and we're going to go get started on it. Okay, so today we're using the PE770, which is a standard 5x7 hoop. And it's my understanding is that there are some hoops that you can do bigger sizes. I don't have those bigger hoops or the split hoops or whatever because I do have a machine that has a bigger hoop and I actually ended up getting these two machines the same weekend. So I just use this for the five by seven and I have a lot of friends who, not a lot of friends, but I have some friends who have the five by seven hoop and this is just, you know, one thing that you can definitely do if you don't have that big old hoop. Okay, you don't have to have a big hoop to do work for people. So let me get this set up 
and I'm not going to show or record the whole stitching process because it's just stitching but I do always check to make sure that the shirt's not going to be gapped up in here anywhere you don't want it to get caught up and you definitely want to watch it I could take the tags off I'm just going to leave it there because it's fine it's not like it could be returned after it's been stitched on but you do want to make sure that nothing's going to flop into your stitch area so I'm going to lower the press pressure foot. I'm going to hit start and I'm going to let it go ahead and stitch. Okay. So I'll come back and we'll see what happens next. Alrighty. It is almost done stitching and it's not too bad. There is a little bit of puckering, but I'll show you what I do to eliminate that puckering that happens around the letters and I shouldn't say eliminate but it does greatly reduce it so I'll show you what I do with that okay so I've got this shirt off of the machine now uh, let me turn the light on so we can get a little better lighting where's the light switch at okay that might be a little bit better for your eyes Let's see here okay so I'm gonna unpin it and get it off the hoop and then I will trim the 809 that I use as the stabilizer That's that chalk from earlier. And so I'm just going to trim around the design, but I'm going to leave just a little bit of the edging on the edge so that it's not close to the letters, but close enough to where the whole shirt doesn't feel like a big old piece of paper wadded up under their chest. And just cut carefully so that you don't accidentally cut the fabric. The last thing you want to do is finish a project only to turn around and cut it up and ruin it. And I am holding my finger on the back side so that I can actually feel where the fabric is at just to make sure that I'm pulling it down. Let's see, I'm like pulling it down to hold it as I trim. Okay, we're almost done. Okay, so that's that. And now I did tell you earlier that there was a little bit of puckering around here. And so what I do to try to decrease that puckering, since I've got the 809 on it, and be mindful of the type of fabric you're using, because you will not be able to do this with all fabrics, okay? But I'm just going to press the back of it. I need to clip that jump stitch there. The... um. PE 770 does not have a auto trimmer on it. So when it jumped from the end of the H in the design, let me turn it over so you can see what I'm talking about. When it jumped from the end of the H in the design to start the T, it did not clip it. So I actually went through and clipped that to keep, you know, from the, um, to keep the design from being pulled or decrease the risk of the presser foot being caught in a jump thread. Okay, so back to the puckering. What I'm going to do, I'm simply going to press, okay? Just going to press a little and then press down a little bit. And that, it doesn't get all of the puckering out, but in my mind, it makes it look a little bit better, okay? And so I am done with that. And that was the last of the shirts that I needed to complete. So I'm going to fold them up and get them ready to pack and send back. 
Alrighty, so these are the five shirts that I stitched up. Um, I want to say each of them took probably about 20 minutes because I'm using the PE770 and I run it slow. Um, what else can I tell you about it? The design I created in silhouette and I sent it to a digitizer to have converted into a embroidery file. And I think it stitched out okay. I do know that some people will use 505 to hold it down a little bit better. Some people will iron it down onto the stabilizer if they're using something like fusible, uh, like 809. Uh, some people will hoop. And I do know that somebody is going to say, well, if you hooped it, you wouldn't have that puckering. You wouldn't have to worry about that so much. I do understand that. But I will sacrifice a little bit of puckering to not have hoop burn all the way around the whole design. So that's just my personal preference with stitching right now anyways. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. I do thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And I hope that I see you all next time. Bye-bye.